Welcome back to The Forge. Thank you for joining us again today for another essential skills lesson. So today's mission is to make a tie bar. So in today's essential skills, we're of course making the tie bar. I'm going to start that with 200 mil of 16 square. I'm going to mark it at two inches with my centre punch, get it in the fire and get the thing upset. Okay, out the forge. Let's cool this right down. Localize that heat, otherwise this bar is just going to bend on me. It's a nice short bar. I can hammer the uh, hot side on the anvil. If it starts to bend, straighten it up. You don't want to cause yourself any problems. I've got a little bit of heat left in this, so I can go again. And if you rotate the bar a little bit, it will help to uh, sort of minimize that bending on just a single side. I just want to straighten everything back up before I stick it back in the forge. And then I'll be good to do it again. So uh, you can see the bar started to swell up nicely. I'm going to do that again. I'm going to quench down to my center punch mark on the next heat and uh, we'll go good for another heat. Okay, out of the fire, into the Bosch. I'm going to cool down to my center punch mark. Over to the anvil, nice and quick. Okay, and straighten up. Okay, and we'll go again. All right, where's that center punch mark? It's pretty much in the right place. Now, I don't actually want a four-sided upset, so I'm gonna forge Get it in the middle first, and then I'm actually going to forge this down. Okay, so let's flatten this down a little bit more. That gives me my two-sided upset. Now I need to refine this a little bit. So I'm just going to do a quick double set with my hammer. Right, so that's our upset lump that we've got there. The next stage with this is to round this end up. So to do that, I'm gonna drop it down onto the corner of my anvil, come in on the corners, and we're gonna go from a sort of square lump that we've got at the moment to an octagon, and then round that up. Okay, so nice and hot, over to the near side of the anvil, and coming in at 45, just a little bit on each face to start with, and the same on that side as well. And we're starting to end up with a little octagon on it. Well, that up a little bit more because I've got a bit, a bit of a balloon shape and I want this to be an octagon. So let's do that again. Good. All right, I'm going to tidy up these uh, shoulders here. So to do that, I'm going to take it over to my hardy hole. And if I can just do that with the hammer. There we go. And the same on the other side. Okay, so nice and hot again. I'm just gonna repeat that process. I'm gonna do it on the far side of the anvil this time, simply because I can then square up the end as well, as well as working on these other faces. Now, you don't wanna be cutting into the bar. We're trying to round up what we've got, not forge it down. Okay, and you can do it on this side as well. Doesn't, doesn't really matter which side of the anvil you work on as so long as it gets the job done. And what we should end up with is that sort of classic British stop sign, that octagon on the end of our bar. Actually tidy up the shoulders again a little. Now this is where having a square faced hammer really comes in handy because you've got a nice flat, sh uh, flat end of the hammer that I can get in that corner with. A little bit more awkward with the round faced hammer, but you can do it. Nothing's impossible. Right. Okay, so now I've got my octagon on the end of my bar, I'm ready to round that up. So whereas I was forging before at 45 degrees, I'm now gonna do it at 22 degrees. Uh, so basically I'm gonna split the difference on all of those facets. Take that corner off, flip it around, do the other side. 
Now when it comes to the far edge, I prefer to do that over here. There we go. And the same there. And keep stopping and having a look to see how you're getting on. So, as I've been hitting those, obviously I've swollen the sides out. So I can square up the, the top face. And now what I'm going to do is rotate that piece, hammering in the same spot, and working the piece of steel underneath my hammer. Just try and round that up a little bit better. And do it again. And the same on the other side. All right, there we go. I can live with that. We've got a nice round ball on the end of the uh, 16 square now, and that's ready for punching. <laughs> okay, so we're ready for punching our round hole through the center. So I can lay this piece flat on my anvil, use my hammer to get the punch into the center, get it a little bit closer, a little bit more control. Mark it gently, have a look. Fairly happy that's the middle. Five or six hammer blows, take your punch away, pull down the end. And we're going to repeat that process until we get through to the other side. Right, I'm starting to get some resistance now, so it's time to turn over. I'm going to use that hole that I've done as a lever to turn the bar over. I'm going to use my hammer as a guide again to give me a bit more control and placement on the punch. Keep calling your punch down. The last thing you want is it for it to get stuck. Okay, so my piece is now touching the bottom of the anvil, so I can go over to the pretzel. One good bang, and you can see I've lost the slug. Get my punch out, call it down. Grab my bar, and my punch hole now goes through both sides nicely in the center, ready for drifting. So, bar is now warming up, ready for drifting. I've got my drift ready, and I've got a bolster plate. So this is set to the same sizes uh, as my finished hole, and is, will offer me a little bit more support when it comes to punching and drifting. Uh, if you drift over too large a hole, what you tend to do is suck all of that extra material down, um, and you distort the hole, you distort the bar that you're trying to punch. Um, so a bolster plate is a good way forward. Okay, so my bar's nice and hot. I'm gonna drop my drift in the hole, grab my hammer, make sure it's the right way around. Start off nice and gently, and then I can just go for it. Because I'm using the bolster plate, it's supporting all that material underneath. And there we are, we're up to size. Straight through, in and out, and we've not got too much distortion on that, so I can just tighten it up. The hammer, like so. And there we are. Our upset, punch and drifted hole. Now, if I was using this for making um, a pintle for a gate, tie bar for a gate, for instance, uh, what I would do then is forge a tenon on the end of a piece of round bar, drop it through the hole, and rivet it up on the backside, uh, and I'd be able to hang my gate hinge from it. Okay, so I'm gonna put a mark on my bar at three inches, and I'm gonna do this on both sides. I'm gonna center punch that. Nice deep center punch so I can find it again. Turn my bar over. There we go. Remember, nice deep center punches that you can actually find when the bar is hot. Okay, so my bar's nice and hot. I'm gonna take my hot chisel. I'm gonna support it on my hammer so I can get it right. Nice and gently to start with. All right, that's good. Happy with that. Um, Make sure it's in the groove. Always work at a slight angle. Nice and gently to start with. Get that line where it needs to be. Work my way down to the outside edge. And again. Good, right. On the next heat, I'm gonna spin around. Okay, same on the other side using my hammer to support the work into my center punch to start with. 
and then using the groove that I've already cut, so I'm sort of overlapping by halfway. And I'm working my way down the bar until I get to the end. I'm happy with that. If you do end up going wonky and whatnot, don't panic. You know, at this early stage, you can, you know, line it back up, twist your chisel, or whatever you need to do to move that line, um, adjust it, and then just drive it in deeper. So, uh, you know, don't panic if you mess this bit up. Okay, so now that I've got that groove in there, I can come in with my chisel, drive it in nice and deep. Work my way along. There's that four, four armor blows. And then cooling my chisel down. Now you've got a very fine edge on a hot chisel, so you need to look after it. Keep it nice and cool. Back into the fire for another heat. Now I did adjust the angle of my chisel there because I could see that my two cuts weren't lining up 100%. And that's absolutely fine. Make adjustments as you need to. Now, as I've cooled down, I'm at sort of a cherry red here. The bar will start to split. There we go. And I can use that shearing action to chase that cut. I do not want to drive my chisel into my anvil. There we go. We've split all the way up the bar, all the way to my center punch mark. Now I'm going to tidy this up a little bit. I don't want to get rid of all of that sort of um, V shape that's on there. I want to leave some of that. If you've got any untidy ragging or really sharp edges, you can, of course, open it up and file those off. But uh, what I'm going to do initially is just give it a squeeze here to tidy that transition point up, and then uh, we'll just simply open them out over the back of the anvil. Okay, so I'm going to close this cut up where the transition is. There we go. And then forge it flat. I'm on you. Now they've overlapped, which is not what I wanted to do. Open them up a little bit. There we go. Better. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to open these up on the end with the chisel. Simply drop it in the hole, give it a twist. Because I need to open it up initially to be able to get it on the bit. I need somewhere to get a hammer in there. That's probably enough. On the next heat, I can take it over to my bit. And because I've opened it up a little bit, I can get in there with my hammer and just tease it round. Okay, out over to the bit. Do the same on the other side. That up a little bit more. Skip over here. Now I could forge this all in rectangular, but uh, you know this is for a traditional tie bar. You wouldn't normally bother, so I'm not going to either. Well, there we go guys, there's the finished tie bar. Pretty happy with how that turned out. Very traditional piece, lots of different processes. We've obviously got our upset, rounding up, punching and drifting, as well as splitting and forming those um, arms on the back end then. Um, traditionally, that would get leaded into uh, a recess in a piece of stonework by the uh, stonemason, and that would have a pin tool sticking out ready to hang a gate as well. So, good set of exercises in that one. And that's the last of the City and Guilds pieces uh, that I'll be covering. Uh, next week, we're going to be moving on to doing uh, different blacksmith tools. So we'll start off with probably a hot chisel and some punches and move on to things like hammers and tongs and the other bits of kit that we can make in the workshop for ourselves. So join us next week. Um, as always, you can follow us on Instagram, support the channel through Patreon and help us make more video and content for you guys. Um, remember to click like and subscribe. Let us know what you think in the comments and we'll see you here next time in the workshop. Cheers, guys.